don't want to be here in West Virginia. I want to be in sunny California and Palm Springs so I live my life of happiness and I went and have fun every day and I live life. But here I live nothing. But I church. I go to church and that's my life. Perhaps God put me here because that's my happiness. I had to live life because I wasn't. I wasn't living for him. I was calling myself a Christian and going to church and leaving church and going and do whatever I felt like doing and talking in any way I felt like talking and dressing in any way I felt like dressing and acting in any way I felt like acting. Okay, well, it was working and I was happy, but there's always an emptiness. There's always something dragging at me, always. I'm just going to go on and on and on, but, but, but something that came over me, and I don't know why, but since I've been prayed over, it's very hard. God, man, it's God. So much fun. But it's still coming at me, and I just keep hearing the shell in my head saying, Whenever that comes at you, you just say, No, I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the evil in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, under your breath all day long. If that's what it takes, do not let it back in. Do not let it back in. So, you know, it's very easy to get sucked into a conversation in your own mind. Very easy. You can just suck yourself into a conversation with yourself. You can think yourself of something. It's very confusing. I'm sorry if I sound crazy right now, but I just want to let you know I'm much better in my mind. I'm much better. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm not a coward. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not afraid. Even though I've been through a lot of stuff, I've never been that. I've never been afraid to face whatever I have. I know, I know in my heart that God has always been there to give me courage to do what I have to do and things to be done. I might seem like a plague most of you know, some of the times when I might, I might just be sitting, I don't know what I'm thinking of. I might, might just be scared and always have that people look at me and are you here? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I just have that look. wanted 
the Lord to return before she passed away. And I'm sure that there are many others. Um, my favorite pastor, and I would call him my mentor, even though I never met him, Chuck Smith, um, he, he so badly wanted to be part of the rapture events. Amen. Why she said that? Why? She wanted to lay her crown at his feet. Ah, I forgot that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She wanted, she wanted, and of course that would be referring to the second coming of Christ. Um, I don't know if she uh, is a rapture believer, but she wanted to take her crown off and put it um, at the feet of Christ. The Bible says that we will do that. We want to pray for um, in your in your daily prayers. Pray for England or whatever it's called, Great Britain. Um, you know, um, yeah. Pray for them. Amen. And pray for Europe. Europe is facing a tremendous crisis. Russia has cut off natural gas and oil to all of Europe. I mean, they're, they are in it for the long haul. It's, I, I don't know what, what will happen. I, I can't even imagine what will happen. Uh, so pray for them uh, that the Lord will push that evil back. We're going to talk about evil today. In just a couple of minutes. Before we do that, I should introduce myself and, and all of us here. I'm Pastor Bill. You're watching Thrive Worship Center in Vienna, West Virginia. And we welcome you and I pray that you enjoy the next 35, 40 minutes as we talk about the gospel. We talk about Jesus. Today we're going to talk about something that is a, a picture of just sheer evil. And, um, and the reason that I chose this is because last week I sent out a message to, do, do y'all get these messages I send out? Raise your hand if you get texts from me. Oh, good. Okay. And, um, and uh, something was said, Michelle and I were, were joking around, and something was said, and, and, uh, and I just said, it's unbelievable. Um, and as, as y'all get to know me better through the years, if, if I'm having a bad day, and, and we all do sometimes have a bad day, if somebody asks me, how are you? I will say, unbelievable. If somebody asks me, how are things going? Unbelievable. Because uh, that could mean almost anything. Right? Yeah, we, we say... How are you? Fine. How's it going? I'm okay. Unbelievable. Amen. And something had happened in my life, um, and I was reminded of it because of a song I heard uh, on the radio. And the circumstances surrounding this particular situation are unbelievable. So much so that if I had to look back at my life at one thing that I know without a doubt God orchestrated, no doubt about it, he stepped through the, 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 the veil, the shield, the dimension that holds him. He's a spirit, we can't see him anyway, but he stepped through and he, he turned some buttons that I'm intervening in this. And God does that. We just don't know it. Because we can't see it. God uses his angelic beings to intervene in our lives. And I, when I'm, by the time I'm done today, I'm hoping that some of y'all will remember something that happened in your life that there is no doubt that it was, it was God, it was the transcendent, 
Ah, if I could just make words up, but I... <laughs> be, I I'm so tired of all words, indefatigable, sublime, transcendent. Yeah, just God. Just God. And he does that. But I want to use a story from the scripture this morning that is a very dramatic story. And I'm going to get a little dramatic as I read it. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be an actor for a moment. And I'm going to play some different parts as I read it. And, and at the end of my time, I, I will, I'll tie it all together. And you're going to go, I, I promise you, you're going to go, whoa. Holy cannoli. Oh my word. I, I promise you, you're going to. Now, a couple of you know this testimony from days uh, gone past. Uh, Christina, I know you do. You'll, you're going to remember. Uh, but, but anyway, don't, don't blow it. And don't tell the end of the story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, all right, bear with me for a minute.
story of the demoniac of the Gadarenes. Um, some of us are familiar with that, perhaps all of us. It's in the fifth chapter of Mark. And, and um, the demoniac of the Gadarenes was um, so so ill, so mentally ill um, that the townspeople were afraid of him. And, and it wasn't because he was Jewish, because he, he wasn't. He was from Gadara. Gadara was a Gentile town. There was a um, what's called a conurbation or a group of towns around uh, this thing. It was called the um, Decapolis, I believe. It was, the, it, was the, it was a bunch of towns, and they're together. And they were Gentile, and, and um, of course, this is in Asia Minor um, at, at the time of uh, Christ. And the we don't know anything about the depravity of the town. You know, it, it could have been Sodom and Gomorrah. We know that there was a lot of demonic activity. Um, or because, of course, I'm just it's conjecture, but it, it makes sense because the world was controlled by pagan gods. Um, and parenthetically, Jonathan Kahn, if you don't read any of his stuff, um, even if you're not a reader, I, I highly recommend you read some of Jonathan Kahn's books. He's the guy that wrote The Harbinger and followed it up with The Paradigm and then The Harbinger too. Um, and now he's written a book which I, I'm into. It's called The Return of the Gods. Um, and the return of here, uh, I'll show it to you. The Return of the Gods is basically the idea that the gods that ruled this world um, before and during the time and many years after uh, and, 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 and today too. Um, that these um, that these gods uh, are are coming back. Um, um, they're called sh sh shadim, and it comes from the Hebrew root word shud, which means to act violently, to lay waste, to devastate that which brings destruction. Um, and in ancient Babylon writings, uh, um, the writings, the word uh, Shadim and Shadu speaks of spirits, protective or malevolent. Now, I'm sorry, malevolent. And malevolent means to be malicious and, uh, and, and, and violent. And the, the later case would match the root word from which the word Shadim uh, de uh, derives. And... These gods were um, too numerous to, to count. I'll give you the name of some of them. Um, but in every major culture of the world, there have been gods, small g. These are not gods. They're demons. Um, there's a, there is a main demon uh, going to come visit us, not us. We're not going to be here. Hallelujah. I'm packed up. I'm ready to go up. How about you? Somebody say amen. amen. And, and these, this, 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 this God, this little G God demon, Apollyon is his name. You don't want to be here when Apollyon shows up. I'm going to tell you that if you're listening to me on the camera, I don't know if you can, help what kind of scope we have here, but you know, or whatever. Uh, hi. You don't want to be here. <laughs> When God gives the keys to the abyss and the angel unlocks that uh, portal and the demons that are in the center of this earth, you say, oh, Bill, you're nuts, man. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am not nuts. I am perfectly sane. Mm -hmm. I am perfectly sane. But I do believe what the Bible says Major cultures and civilization from every god, one called Enel of Summer, to Ra of Egypt, to Amarak uh, 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 of the Arctic, to 
Kukulukan of Central America to Bhutan of Northern Europe to Dionysus of uh, Greece to Abatalala of Africa to Taiwan of Babylon to Vixia of China to Oro of Polynesia to Ara Mazda of Persia to uh, I guess they made the Mazda car after that. I'm not buying any more Mazdas, by the way. <laughs> Perun of Russia, Shamash of Assyria, um, Dagda of Ireland, Juno of Rome, Shiva of India. Anybody buying any uh, uh, currency, cryptocurrency nonsense? Don't buy Shiva. Don't you do it. Shiva is is a is the god of India, a statue of Shiva, naked, all twisted up and everything. It's 15 feet tall. It's in front of the building in CERN, Switzerland, where they're colliding atoms together. You think I'm crazy? Look it up. Don't you buy? I wouldn't buy any Shiva. Countless multitude of others. Wherever there were people, there were gods. And these gods, Jonathan Kahn uh, proposes that these gods went kind of underground, <laughs> no pun intended, and they have been waiting to come back. And they're coming back. Can you imagine naming a cryptocurrency the future of its... its you know, we know it's the future of money because the, the government is creating a central bank for cryptocurrency. And one of its names, Shiva. So this guy, this demoniac in uh, Gadara, um, we, had, we know him as one in the book of Mark. In Matthew, there's two of them. And they were so sick that the people like forced them out of town and they lived amongst the tombs. Um, in an ancient uh, uh, Asia Minor, there were hills, and up on the hills they would have tombs, and they would, and they would. That's where all the dead people went. And, and you weren't allowed to touch dead people if you were a Jew. Uh, and if you did, even touch, even a little touch, you had to do seven days of ritual cleansing. So the dead was uh, uh, anathema to a Jew, and the tombs even worse. But to the Gentiles, we don't know. You know, we know people that today, they go and they, they, they want to go play in the cemetery on Halloween. I want to say to you, do not, listen to me in the camera, look me right in the eyeballs, do not celebrate Halloween. It is it is a, a, an evil holiday. If you want to do something with your kids, um, I, I already know that Fairlawn Baptist Church is going to do a, a trunk or treat. There will be a hundred cars, and there won't be any demons there. So celebrate. And don't be putting on these stupid outfits that, that are all nothing but sexual and then going to these parties. Woo! Don't do that. Please. What night is Halloween? Does anybody know? Can anybody figure, find out what night Halloween is? I think it's a Monday night. Well, I'll tell you what. It's a Monday night. I'll tell you what. Halloween, Monday night Halloween, we're going to be, the, our praise team will be in this building, and we will be worshiping God, and you're invited. So there you go. I just made an executive <laughs> decision. Is Rusty still here? He's, he's probably like, well, what are you doing? Listen, this demoniac was almost surely a Gentile. The other reason we know that he was a Gentile is that he was so unclean. He had all these areas of his life that were unclean. Number one, the area he lived in was, was, well, it was Gentiles, and it was unclean. And number two, he lived in the tombs where dead people were, and the tombs were, according to a Jew, were unclean. Number three, he had um, what the Bible describes as 6,000 demons within his soul. For those of y'all that are worried, if you're a Christian, if you can be possessed and taken over by demons, the answer is no. Because the Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So if you're worried about that, stop. 
But you know what? Learn your Bible. Take it out and read it. The more you read it, the more filled with faith you will become. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Oh, I'm all over the place today, aren't I? That's because why we go to church. We want to hear the Word of God because it builds us up. All right, so this guy was also unclean because he was around 2,000 pigs. Now, there was this herd of pigs that was right there. And, and, and pigs, pigs were absolute anathema to the Jews. If you look at the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus and the, the, you know, you can read about it. God says, stay away from pigs. Why did he do that? It's not that he didn't like pigs. Everybody likes porky pig, right? It was because they were dirty. They were foul. They, they wallowed around in mud. They ate stuff. And if you didn't cook the pig all the way through, you would get a worm called trichnosis. Well, we can cure that today, right? If you go to the emergency room, you're not feeling well, and a bunch of worms crawl out of your, your nose, or you, you got a problem. You need some medicine, right? Okay, so this demoniac guy was really a mess. He was a hot mess. How did he get that way? How did he become so desperate, so... so uh, he, he, was, he, it was, he was tortured, he was tormented. How did he become that way? Well, we don't know. We don't know, but it's safe to say that something happened in his young life, into his young adulthood, that caused him to uh, live a life that was uh, in some way horrible and evil. And he, somehow or another, he got in touch with one of those gods I just read out and Baal and, and, and all this stuff that was going on in those days. And he accepted that. And next thing you knew, he's filled with demons. And, and Sherry said one thing, and it's important, but I want to make a little correction in what our friend Sherry said. She said that if you clean that room out, you cast that, you cast that demon out, if, if the Holy Spirit, and you don't need some nut from some church, going, ah, you don't need that. It's not necessary. All that hogwash. All you need is, uh, you come right over here with the elder, an elder of the church, and you pray. You, and that's all you need. You don't have to go through an exorcism, and none of y'all are possessed, but you may have friends that are. Um, and and the, um, well, I lost my chain of thought. Darn. What was I saying? Something about exorcism? Yeah. Oh, Sherry. When the demon comes out, the Bible says that the room is clean, but you've got to fill the room with something. You fill it. It's your. It's, it's a metaphor. It's your heart. That the evil comes out of your heart. You renounce it. It's I renounce the sin of the besetting sin that may destroy our lives. And, you, and we, we all at one point in our, our life had a besetting sin and it was destroying our life perhaps. If nothing else, it was just good old fashioned pride and not being willing to fall upon our knees before an awesome God and say, please, Jesus, receive my thanks. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I am a sinner. Thank you. Amen. And when you do that, the room is filled up with what? With what? Kyle, what is it filled up with? Starts with an H. There's an S after it. The Holy Spirit. That's right. You can't get enough of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like water. When, when, he, when you pour water on something, it completely takes it over. It, it wicks. It's called wicking. When I was a sales rep, I sold a product called Cydex. It was polymethylene by guanide. It, yeah, it killed bugs. They put their, when you go to the hospital, they put a scope down your throat. Ask them if they soaked it in Cydex first, please. Amen. And in that water, in that solution, was something called a surfactant. A surfactant is what makes water wetter. Say that with me. Is that possible? You can make water wetter. Yeah, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Fills our heart. This man was 
beyond hope. So much so that the townspeople didn't want him around. And when he did come down into town, they would chain him up and they would drag him back out to the tombs. They'd say, get away from us. We don't want you. Or he would, he would howl at the moon at night. And the Bible says he would cut himself with stones. And, and these are all, um, you can, you can uh, parallel uh, your life on the camera. Maybe you're watching and you're, you're tormented. You can, you can parallel your life to the things that you are doing where you are living what are you cutting yourself with stones are you are you beating yourself mentally i'm no good no one likes me i i i'm i'm going to eat some worms yeah yeah that's a yeah I remember that right we do that people do that and jesus walks up to this man jesus just he just walked right up to him and calmly said to him, what is your name? Now, the, 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 the demoniac, the, the crazy man, he was speaking. He spoke. It was the demons inside of him that spoke. They said to him, who, what do you want, son of God, son of the most high God? Who? Wow. The, the demons know. They shudder. When you say Jesus, they run. Do you believe that? Please take a hold of that and believe it when you say the name of Jesus. The demons, they scramble out of the room like a bunch of sissies. Amen? Your guardian angel says, ha, nice job. Kyle, good job. You got rid of those dingbats. And yes. And he, the, he, he said it was the demon speaking. And Jesus looked at, the, looked at this man. He looked him right in the eyes and he said, what is your name? I was taught when I, uh, years ago, in praying for someone that is possessed by a demon, and I've done that many times, um, and, and seen the demon leave, you always ask the demon, what is your name? And the demon will answer you if the person, in fact, is uh, indwelt with uh, a foul spirit. And if the person does not answer you, they are not indwelt with a foul spirit. We had a young man that came here one day about two years ago with a mother. She called me. She said, will you please see my son? She said, I used to attend Cornerstone Gospel Church, and I'm desperate. My son is acting very strange. He's saying all these terrible stuff. He was a little boy. He was 11 years old. They walked in here. He was as calm as a cucumber. Just, you know, we sat in the sanctuary. I spoke to him. I said, what, what, what are you hearing? He said, I, have, I hear voices in my head telling me to kill my mother. And he looked right at me and said that. He, it was shocking. It was the first time an 11-year-old. I, I dealt with other people. But an 11-year-old, he didn't even blink. He had uh, darkness in his eyes. Um, I looked up the definition of sociopath. A sociopath, one of the things that you'll notice about a sociopath is they have very dark eyes. And the reason is, is because their pupil dilates down so small because they're afraid of everything. At the, at the base of all, all anger and hatred is fear. And their pupil dilates down. You say, well, that would make their eyes brighter. No, it actually makes them darker. I don't know why, but it does. This young boy looked at me as if he was saying to me, may I have an ice cream? And he said, I want, I'm going to kill my mom. Yeah. And I did a little digging, and, and uh, I discovered that the boy's father was beating him um, and cursing at him. And, yeah. And I said to the mother and the little boy, I, I said to her, uh, ma'am, I don't know if your son has a demon or not, but I'd like to pray for him. And I asked her, that, if him, I said, can I pray for you? And he said, sure you can. This little boy. And we went up and we knelt down and we prayed. And I asked the little boy to look at me and I said, what is your name? And he didn't answer. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, demon, tell me your name. And he didn't answer. And I knew then that he doesn't have a demon. 
He has been taught to see and do those things by the Father. So we prayed. When they left, I pulled the mother aside and I said, please take him to the health clinic tomorrow. Don't wait. Take him tomorrow. I never heard from them again, so I don't know what happened. But at the end of the day, this happens. To this demoniac, Jesus said, what is your name? And the demoniac said, our name is Legion. So there were 6,000 of them. That's how big a legion is. A Roman legion. That's a lot of devils. Jesus, and they were angry. They're like, please don't torment us before our time. You, what do you mean before your time? What is this time? It's the return of Christ. When Almighty God will cast every evil person, every demon into the, into the uh, lake of fire. That's their, the, the Bible says that the, the lake of fire, that hell is designed for the devil and his demons. It wasn't designed for us. That's a sermon maybe for next week. And so Jesus, he, they said, the demon said to him, don't, please don't torment us. Put us, throw us in the herd of pigs. And Jesus said, fine. You, pig. <laughs> and it stirred the pigs up. They went absolutely crazy and they ran off a cliff. And it, it killed all of them. They all drowned. Who knows what I'm going to say next? It was the first case of devil ham. When I was when I was a young man, I joined the Navy, and I was very sick mentally. I was raised in a, in a very uh, extremely dysfunctional home, a lot of alcohol and drugs, and, and my father was, uh, I know, I'm sure that he loved us, but he was a very angry man, very tense. Um, he would blow up over anything and it was really scary because he was a big guy and we were little kids and and so what the the result of that was that my mother was always high on Valium or, 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 or a couple of martinis because she just couldn't deal with it my mother just wasn't raised to deal with that time of retirement yeah I, I don't know anyway by the time all of us hit 18 all the five of us left um, and we were all very dysfunctional but we were also extremely productive and the reason we were so overly productive is we would do anything to please Dad. Uh, we'd paint the house, mow the grass, wash the car. We'd do anything to please the old man. And we were raised where everything was, my mom was always looked perfect. She was the beauty queen, man. She always looked like a million bucks. And my dad always had on the uniform and the shine shoes. And so even to this day, <laughs> I shine my shoes. All of us spread out all over the country, the five kids, and, um, and I joined the Navy, and I was just an opportunist. I just went, I went wherever the wind blew me, and I would do anything that everybody else was doing. And so needless to say, I saw a, a lot of very uh, sinful things, and I did a lot of sinful things. Um, and so by the time I hit 30 years old, I was completely scrambled. Um, I would have panic attacks um, because I didn't think I fit in. The devil will tell you that. You don't fit here. Um, you know, I had maneuvered my way into the, a job um, at, for the biggest medical company in the world. And the salespeople in this company were... They were all high-powered people, very high-powered. Most of them had MBAs, and, and here I was, this guy that didn't even have a college degree, and I'd walk into a room, and I would feel like I, would so, I was so inferior. And they say, everybody's talking about their college ring. I got my college ring now. Here, Mr. Johnson & Johnson, Centurion Bible <laughs> College, neener, neener, neener. They had the briefcases and the Mont Blanc pen and the Rolex and all that stuff, and I, I, I just didn't fit. And I finally imploded. I couldn't take the pressure any longer. The sin, the fact that I was a Christian, but I was living on the hillside and thorns and thickets were just engulfing me. And one day I snapped. Now I either had a mental breakdown or Almighty God said to me, Bill, 
I have a job for you in West Virginia, and I'm sorry, pal, but I'm going to have to break you in half because you're not going to let me prepare you if I don't crush you. The Bible says the calling of God is irrevocable, and that goes for all of us. And so God did crush me. I woke up one day in, with he voices in my head, nonstop, nonstop. You're a loser. Nobody likes you. Just kill yourself. You're just a, and they were constant. I'm telling you, it was constant. And I tried to ignore. By the end of the day, I went home to my to my wife and I said, "Listen, I got you. Got to do something. I'm I am I got demons in me." And the pastor came, a guy named Jim Rogers. He came and we prayed and I got on my knees and he said, Bill, you, I've known you a long time, Bill, and you're a great singer and you really got the Bible verses down and everybody thinks you're Joe Christian. I know what you are, dude. You are a phony and I know it. And God hates phonies. Oh, man, he doesn't like phonies. If you're a Christian and you're a phony and a hypocrite, he will, he will bring you to task. He doesn't want you to live that way. He wants you to be at peace. He wants you to bear fruit. And he, and he, he crushed me. God crushed me. I went a year trying my best to fight this torment. It was... It was torment. Can you, can you relate? Have you ever been depressed? Depression is horrible. You can't stop it. It just crushes you. It, it eats you alive. And sometimes it's just chemical in your brain. And sometimes you got demons all over you. And you invited them. They didn't come on accident. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. But when you are a Christian, when you are faithful, when you have the power of Almighty God, when you know the Scripture, the Scripture says that you have the power to crush the head of the scorpion, to crush the snake. Furthermore, the Bible says that you even have the power in the name of Jesus Christ to overcome Satan himself. Satan, go to hell. And don't be messing around with us. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's not a demon within 100 miles in this building right now. There isn't. The whole time I went through this, all the years after I got saved at that Christian concert in 1981, the collapse happened in 1989. All that time... I listened to Christian music. I listened to sermons. I, I was, I hated what I was doing in life, but I didn't, I, just, I was so messed up. I just, I just didn't know what to do. I just kept existing, you know? And I was, I was as, I, as I told Mary, I was kind of on a level two narcissist. I was selfish. I just, you know, uh, Maureen had a miscarriage one time. Uh, she was about three months pregnant, I think. And and I and I went out and played tennis. Just you know, just horrible, selfish. And 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 some of us get that way. Not all of us. If you're watching by the camera and you, if you if this is what's happening in your life, listen to me. I have a remedy for you. It's coming in just a couple of minutes. I'm almost done with my story here. And the 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 music that I love the most was Bob Bennett, the song you just heard. Bob Bennett is, a, is, is still alive. He lives in Nashville. Um, I could tech, email him tomorrow and say, hey, Bob, how you doing? He, big, big fella, big bear of a man, um, affable. He'll hug you and, oh, you just, just get buried. And, and he's just a big, lovable man. And, and, um, but he's a poet. I hope you listen to the words of that song, particularly the last line. I'm telling you this story because man of the tunes I was. Bob Bennett wrote that song before 1989. You ask me how I know that. Well, here's what happened as I was trying to listen to Bob's music and read the Bible, and it got worse and worse and worse. I, I wound up back in California, and... Um, I was driving down the interstate or the freeway. We call them freeways. Y'all call them interstates. And I have no idea what a route is. 
Say, route two, take route two. I thought, what, what the heck is a route? Anyway, I'm, I'm in the car and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill myself. I was gonna drive my car into a pylon. I'd had enough. I couldn't stand it anymore. Kill yourself, kill yourself. Drive the car into the into the pylon. Go ahead, you loser. Yeah. You look at me and you say, Bill, are you kidding with me? This happened to you? Yep. Yeah. It sure did. Has any of this ever happened to you? So, yeah, so you know, in its varying degrees, folks, we'll talk about that next week. I'm just telling you my story because I promised you I was going to share with you something unbelievable, and I'm about to do it. So get ready. Here it comes. So a dysfunctional young man manages to get into the corporate world and marry this gorgeous little gal in California and have cute little kids and all that routine. Successful and all of a sudden total mental breakdown implosion. Why? The calling of God is irrevocable. The Lord wanted me, I believe with all my heart, the Lord wanted me to be here speaking to y'all and other people through the camera on Friday nights. I believe that's what he, that was my job. It's what he called me to do. And, and so I'm, I'm, I wasn't listening to the Bob Bennett song at that very moment. I had the radio on, and I'm up just about to just say, that, you know, the heck with it. I've had enough. I, you know, unbuckled the seatbelt, pressed the accelerator down to gain enough speed to where I, I knew it would be instant. And the radio said, hi, this is Stephen Arterburn. I'm the founder of New Life Treatment Center in Orange, California. If you are at the end of your rope, if you're desperate, if you're, then please, please come. Let us help you. I swear to you. He gave the phone number and the address, and it was the road, it was Ball Road. It was right up ahead of me. Less than a mile. Ball road. I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. They had tried a year to get me to take medication. And no, I'm a Christian. I can't take medication. God will beat this. God will teach you a lesson is what he'll do. Usually God doesn't intervene. Usually God lets you go through the fire. Because he knows what's coming out the other end is going to be beautiful. So what happened? I'll finish this up because I see that I want Sherry to hear this last part of the story before she goes. I drove into the treatment center. They admitted me in the treatment center right away because I told them I was going to kill myself. And I was crazy. I was, I can't even imagine. I, you know, I, I was crazy. And... <clears throat> They admitted me, and they processed me, and I, I just was bewildered. I, I, I have, Has anybody in here ever had to go to jail or go to a mental health place for 72 hours? It's very bewildering. And I, they processed me, and, and I was taken down a hallway in this place. It was a, it was a hospital. I thought I was going to have a golf course and have martinis, and <laughs> it was a hospital. And they took me into a, a room, and they said, we want to introduce you to your, um, your partner for the next four weeks while you'll be here. It was Bob Bennett. Go ahead and gasp. I swear, it was Bob Bennett. Bob and I became friends. Bob was in the treatment center. I can't, I can't tell you why. Um, this is my Bible from 1981. If your Bible doesn't look like this and you've been a Christian for many years, then shame on you. Shame on you. See this? If your Bible isn't all torn up and all brown and everything, shame on you. Get that thing out and read it. I can't read, Bill. Hogwash. Hogwash. You don't want to read. You can read. 
I'm saying if you've been a Christian for many, many years, now there are some people that won't let their Bible get dirty or anything, and I get that. So anyway, if, look, if, 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 you, if it's true, receive it. If it's not true, I love you. But I, if I find in California right now, Bill, don't beat the sheep. Here we go. I, I, I'm going to beat you. Boom. Read your Bible. Boom. Bill. Dear Bill. January 15th, 1990. Dear Bill, you are who and what God says you are. His son, beloved, forgiven, restored. Believe him. And remember this, the words of an anxious man, also a husband and father. I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Mark 9, 24. Bill, in your heart of hearts, this is what you really want. With love in Jesus, your brother, his servant, Bob Bennett. Now, if anybody, if anybody here or by the camera thinks that that's a coincidence, then you need to take some notes. It's not a coincidence. God does intervene in our lives, and He will not stop until you are perfected as he has called you to be. With, we are being changed in the, in the image of Christ with every day with ever increasing glory. And one day you're going you're gonna to go poof and you're going to land at the feet of Jesus. Queen Elizabeth, man, can you just imagine her going, whoa! Yeah. And Jesus is going to look at you and say, because you accepted me as your Savior, I want to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, there's a few things we need to talk about. We won't worry about that today. Next week, I'm challenging you to think all week long about something like that. That is unbelievable. I, I want to have y'all come. If you have a, an event, a story that is unbelievable, and you know it was God, it, I'm not talking about getting saved. That doesn't count. That already, that already Then I want to invite you to come share. So the invitation is open. Amen. All right, let's all stand up together. Amazing grace.